Hey Flosstube, it's Michelle Farm Girl. I'm outside because <laughs> seasons are short here, so. Um, I tried doing a video from my patio, but it's kind of rush hour traffic right now, and it's pretty loud. So I'm behind the barn where hopefully you can't hear it. I can still hear it a little bit, so I hope it's not too loud. Um, I'm in the big girl pasture. Yep. She has no personal boundaries. Um, it's hot, so you probably see them panting a little bit. They um, don't particularly like the heat. Uh, they'll come out a lot um, during the middle of the night and graze when it's cool. They're all breathing kind of heavy now. She's like pushing up against me. So in any case, I have been doing mania. I am a little... <laughs> I'm a little behind, but I did host a retreat, and um, so I got that. So I'll get caught up, um, or I'll use that I hosted a retreat as an excuse um, to stay behind. Okay, go lay down, girl. It's hot. All right, so anyways, um, I have been stitching. Not a whole lot. My goal is to um, get one length of thread in a day, if I can do that. Um, I did it last year. I started 31 projects and it worked It worked well because I had everything kitted up. This year I went to go make a list of all the floss that I needed to kit up all these projects and it would have been a lot of money. So can I help you? Um, so what I ended up doing is I unkitted all of my projects and had to buy like skeins. I am making now a master's set of, um, I already have a whole set, a full set of DMC, and I'm just making a master set of all my specialty flosses, and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to organize those. And the weeks was pretty easy, I just wound those around the little card that they came in and um, put them in a bobbin box. So I have a master um, set of floss and I'm just pulling from that and I'm just going to keep it like that. I generally stitch in bed so at night um, I don't want to have to get up and go get stuff and sometimes what I'm working on last night I don't feel like working on tonight so I'll just pull something from my whip basket and I have way too many projects in there. so. I just pull something and then I want to have my all of my floss um, I want to have access to that and not have to like go to another room or go dig it out of a box or try and find it okay I'm um, I'm just gonna show you the things that I've been working on not any plans because those are always subject to change okay so the first thing I started was this project that was um, passed on to me by by um, Beth, the off-road knitter on Instagram. She has been stitching it, and I really loved it. It was super cute. And then all of a sudden, she stopped. She didn't like she didn't like her fabric. So, um, and she started it over. And so I bought it from her for a steal of a deal. I think that this is the called for linen, which is um, a dirty linen. I don't know, I've never used dirty linen before, so I'm not sure if it's this dark or what this is, but it, the first thing, she didn't like the linen. And the first thing that my daughter said when I took it out of the envelope when it came in the mail is, I love that fabric. So I think it's perfect, is um, Barbara Anna. Love Never Fails by Barbara Anna. And it's super cute. It's, okay, so the majority of this, let's be real, this is all her stitching. Um, and before I agreed to take it, I did like look closely at it and made sure that we cross our X's the same way because that would have been. And, um, so the majority of this is her doing um, because I started this at retreat. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of stitching going on there. So let me show you. 
And then her stitches are so fine and they lay so nice that I really thought, at first I thought she was, I mean, we all looked at it and you can really tell the difference in my floss. So I don't know if she ironed it or, I think she stitches tighter than I do for sure. So maybe that's it. But in any case, I'm going to keep going with it. I love it. And this was just my little start while I was at the retreat because ain't no stitching going on there. So this is all hers, and I did this leaf right here. That was it. Just, and that was it. And that was what I got done. I think I, I got that done on Friday night. And on Saturday... So this next project was actually a sal I started. I think it was, may have even been last year. No, it wasn't during Mania, because I would have started it. But I, anyways, I started a sal last year and I never even started the project. Um, I did um, create a hashtag, it's the Felice Navidad SAL. And people post on Instagram, somebody even finished their sampler and I just started mine for mania so without further ado and Veronica I see that you're stitching it I know you haven't um, pulled it out in a while but so it's a blackbird design so pretty I love this and this was my Saturday start Ta -da! and this is just um, some Zweigart linen that I just dyed myself um, and I just wanted it to be um, kind of the same color as what was on the cover there and it's pretty close um, um, that's my start and it was actually more I think than one length of floss or maybe not but this is what's left so that's close so Okay, and then um, next is another Blackbird Designs. And this one was actually a start and a finish. This is Hats Off to Uncle Sam. And I know Vanna did this with the, and they give all the instructions on how to make the little box to display it in. And it's just a paper mache box that you paint and turn upside down and put like on a wooden disc. Very clever, love those ladies. They're super creative and it's just a, a fun little display. So, and I did it on the called for fabric is a picture of this plus murky. And um, I did that. And this is just a 12 by 12 piece and my LNS sells it like that. And I did this in dinky dyes and that was my little start and finish. Sometimes I put in just one strand of floss on the project that I'm starting and then I put it away and I pull something else that I've been working on that I've been really enjoying. Um, because for me, what Mania does is, thank you Chloe, is just, um, is just to ensure I have all my projects mm -hmm. kitted up and then I can pick them up at any time because then I'm assured that I have all the floss and everything that I need to start it. And so this was a kit that Yvonne had um, given me. I think she got it at the Dying to Stitch retreat um, last year and she sent it for me right before the retreat. And it came with everything, the floss and um, the fabric and the backing fabric. And so I got that done and I actually finished it. Um, I did this on Saturday while my daughter was getting her hair done because she had prom. And then I FFO'd it. And so this is, you can see they have it finished a little bit differently, but I loved this fabric. But I wanted to just make the top part. I really like this trim too. It's really pretty. And um, so there's the, so pretty. And then the backing fabric and it came with that too. So I think I might get like a little acorn or squirrel charm or just needs a little bit <laughs> A little bit of embellishment there so I feel like that is like two days work since it was an FFO um, and it's stuffed with Angora wool 
And then the next start, so while we were at retreat, uh, we discovered that Paulette had uh, released a new pattern, actually three new patterns, and um, everybody and their mother was tagging Yvonne and I um, in the post, which was awesome. And of course, I fell in love with it. And so, goat load, it's super de duper cute. And it's a set of three, or it's a series that they're sold separately, but there are three of them that she released. The other is Snort Stack, these little pigs. So cute. And the next one is She Peep. And that's super de duper cute. And um, she messaged me and said she would like to send me a goat load. And what? Of course, it has two of the breeds that I breed. So it's got Alpine, Anubian, and right on top where it should be is Dissanen. So I was super, super excited. Would have run to my LNS to um, buy these for myself, but well, thankful and grateful and humbled uh, that you would send this to me. So from the bottom of my heart, Paulette, thank you so much. This was very kind and thoughtful and generous and I just immensely appreciate it. And I'm super, super in love with them. Paulette's one of my favorite designers. Um, I, you can probably tell I stitch a lot of Plum Street stuff. So, um, and then I'll show you my, it's a meager little start, but a start nonetheless. Um, this is a Lakeside Linen Vintage Pearl Barley. And the fabric it called for was, um, picture this plus Oaken. And um, Stitchville was just out of it. So, or maybe they haven't gotten it yet. It's a relatively new color. It's very pretty. So I tried to find something kind of close to it. Um, I do have a little piece of it, but it was a 32 count and it's just like a nine by 13. It wouldn't been, have been big enough to fit all three and I wanted them all to be the same. And I wanted to start them immediately. So um, they came in the mail on Monday after retreat. Is that Monday? Pretty sure that was Monday. And, th and I was actually on my way to Stitchville and I thought, I gotta check the mail before I go. And they were in there, so I took them with me and kitted them right up. I actually got them before Stitchville did. So thank you so much, Paulette. And so there's my start. So this is Goat Heap. Can you not take it? And um, that's Goat Heap. And I did make a little mistake and I accidentally did the border on this one with two threads instead of one. And the other two I did with one. And then um, I frogged it. Um, so then I promptly restitched it again with two more threads. So I have not frogged it. I haven't decided if I'm going to. I really don't think you can tell and it doesn't make that much of a difference so I'm probably going to just leave it um, but I'm loving these I want them out um, for summer so I'm going to um, that's what I've been working on after I've been putting one I don't know if I said that or not I've been putting just like one strand one length of thread in my new starts every night and then I'll just work on whatever. So then I, at least I know they're started, but I don't, I don't like have to keep working on it or anything. Um, my next was um, one of the patterns that I had asked um, Sue, who is Susie Reno, to bring back of Teresa's for me from market. And so this is basket of eggs and so what, the one thing I have been doing is I've been starting these projects and I've been stitching them in hand because putting them all in a hoop or in a Q-snap every day would probably want, make me want to set my hair on fire. So, um, but I can stitch in hand. I don't particularly enjoy it and I'm pretty sure I have the beginnings of some carpal tunnel and so it's not comfortable really, especially with this hand to hold the fabric. Um, and my stitches look horrible. In fact, I'm not even going to show you close because they look awful. And this is two strands and so it's, so it's just kind of chunky and I haven't decided if I'm going to pull it out or not. And I kind of changed my technique halfway through it because of the double, the using two threads. I will probably end up pulling it out and starting it over because I just 
I look at it and I've pulled it out. I should be done with it. It should have taken like a day and I just, I cannot get over how messy my stitches look. So I'm probably gonna pull those out and start them over. But I have actually two of the boxes um, and Teresa has a tutorial on how to finish them and I bought two of those little boxes. So I would really like to finish it. And so, um, so we'll probably, that's probably gonna be started over, but we'll see. And then after that, I started, um, this is my only Christmas pattern. I have just tiny work, one over one, Merry Christmas. You don't really appreciate how small this really is at all until you start stitching it. I mean, like this is probably the equivalent of a size of Valdani. Like, so let me just show you. So here's the pattern. <laughs> this is my start right here. This is Santa, that's his hat. I mean, it's almost as big as the picture. So that is, um, so it's one over one. I am stitching it. This is not a Lugana. I, they're pretty sure this this is like a clearance Joblin that I got um, at Hobby Lobby. So yeah, teeny, teeny, tiny. But it's going to be super cute. Um, I did swap out the color. I think I'm using um, Classic Color Works like Cherry Bark or... It called for chili pepper, or what is that? Chili something. And it just had a lot of orange in it, which I do see in the pattern, it does, but it's more of an orangey red. But I like um, the red red, so I think it's really pretty. And that. Then, this next one, if you watched, oh, and I have to mention that the two hour video that I did the week before the retreat, I was actually, when I watch um, YouTube, I watch it um, from my bedroom. Mm. And I usually send it from my phone to my TV through Roku because it's just easier that way because the it's way up and I always have to do this with the remote and so I just send it with my and then so yeah so I was watching TV and thought that um, I was in my queue and that I, sometimes what happens is that it auto plays and sometimes it'll roll around to my videos and I find that super annoying it only does that on the app because I'm not really I'm not logged in as me and I don't want to sit in bed and watch my own videos, and that's dumb. So I went to go delete them from my phone, and I thought I was in my queue, and I was actually in Creator Studio. And I deleted two or three of my videos before I realized what an idiot I was. So the good thing is, is that that video happened to have a lot of views. Um, so hopefully you saw it, but I did have a couple people message me and ask, and someone commented asking where it was because they were halfway through it and they came back to watch the rest of it and it was gone. So um, my sincerest apologies. <sighs> Technology is hard. Technology is hard. That's all I've got to say. So hopefully I won't do that again. I did not mean to. And that was a bummer because I didn't, I don't save my videos because it takes, I do them on my phone so it just takes up room. And once they're uploaded to YouTube, I delete them. So all of that is gone. Um, if you made it to the end, bless you, because that was an epically long video. Um, if you made it to the end, you also saw that um, I put some video in there of a couple of my does having babies. So I hope you um, enjoyed that. A lot of people seem to think it was interesting. And if you missed it, so terribly sorry. Okay, so next, um, if you watched my retreat video, you saw Lisa Kindred Stitcher brought a ton of her... Um, 
finished projects and some of her mirrors. And I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. In particular, I want to thank Jean and Donna and Denise, Kathy, uh, Deb, and Kelsey for hauling all of their framed projects because that is, um, that's kind of a pain, especially like Donna and Jean emptied out their walls and just brought a ton of stuff. And I don't know if you ladies had a chance, but it, you know, read through the comments because everybody really appreciated that you took the time to um, bring those and um, they loved it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And hopefully in the fall we'll have a lot of people that bring some finished things. You know, if everybody brings one or two things, we'll have such an eclectic thing. And they don't have to be FFO'd if, you know, if they're just stitched. Um, but people really enjoyed that. And I, I really enjoy seeing them in person too. I mean, I wouldn't stitch a mirror. It's just not my thing. I see it. Um, but I think they're beautiful. Like they're like Barbies, you know, I played with Barbies and dolls a lot and they kind of remind me of that. And they're so beautiful. Um, the reason why I wouldn't stitch one is the beading. I appreciate the beading more than you will ever know. And some of those that Donna brought had so much beading and, um, Oh, and by the way, if anybody knows where the the one that Jean stitched that's a full coverage, it's Mystic, it's Mystic Stitch, I believe she said it was, and it is a um, it's a full coverage, and it was the Vintage Santa. If anybody knows uh, where I might be able to find that chart, because I did, I've messaged them, I've emailed them, I haven't gotten a response, and I've done. Um, Google searches and I've checked eBay and I've checked um, Etsy and can't find the chart anywhere so um, if anybody knows where I might find it um, I don't want to borrow it from anybody I'm happy to buy it um, you know there's no no promises and no guarantees that it would ever get done but I would certainly like to make an attempt at it it was so beautiful and it's right up my alley um, with my house style. I showed it to my husband and he loved it. <laughs> so if anybody knows where I can find it, she's just really going to town, isn't she? Is she super distracting? She's itching her head. She's such a goof. So, um, yeah, I would love to be able to find that one. Or if anybody knows if they sell things after they, I mean, it's, an older chart I think I looked it up and it was like from 2010 or something so if anybody knows please let me know next um, is a Brenda Gervais so you're probably gonna see a theme to my mania this year it's a lot of Brenda it's a lot of Paulette it's a lot of Blackbird um, thrown in with a little um, summer house stitch works you know a little smattering here and there of Stacy Nash and but I am definitely um, very set in my stitching style. Uh, that's pretty obvious. So anyways, this next chart is such a goodie. I found this and um, fell in love with it. It's from 2014. And then I saw Lisa Kindred Stitcher once. I, was, um, I had bought the pattern and I really liked it. And then I saw, she showed it on her video finished and then I loved it and she brought it to retreat with her and it is amazing. She did it on, um, so it's Heap, in the, Heap on the Woods and I think I showed it when I um, bought it. The um, verse says, Heap on the wood, the wind is chill, but let it whistle as it will. We'll keep our Merry Christmas still. I love the people. So I totally want to do like just the small with them on it. They're so cute. And um, her, her fabric, and you can see it. Um, I don't know where the dogs are running off to. But she did it in a really light fabric, and I thought it was really pretty. Um, this is kind of a medium tone fabric, but hers is really light, and I, I really liked it. So this is a... Oh, this is um, a lakeside linen. It's vintage maritime white. And then... This is Weeks Dye Work Putty on it. So it is pretty light because putty is not a dark color. And it's kind of like it's an off white. Sorry, the sun is setting behind me. So it's kind of an off white. It's very pretty. Almost like it was 
coffee dyed with a cappuccino. Trista thinks it's pretty too. So I'm really enjoying that. I It is a large chart, but if you look at it, it's 260 by 191, but there's really not that much sticking. There's sticking. There's really not that much stitching. There's um, a lot of open space in the back and you know how words are, they go quickly. So I'm really hoping to have that done by Christmas, we'll see. And then the next one is, this was a mystery sampler from I believe it was 2011. It was a three part mystery sampler. And so the first one it came with was this border and um, and that's what you got with that one. Then the second one had this part inside. And then the third one is the whole sampler. So this is what the sampler will look like when it's complete. The colors are absolutely gorgeous. And you really can't stitch it with all three parts. First of all, the first part is the only part that has the color key. And then the second part only has this inside chart. It does not have like the border. And then the third part only has this charted part down here um, in relation to the border. So you do need to have, to be able to stitch it, you do need to have all three parts, Abby. So I'm doing this on a 40 count vintage pearl barley. And this is actually, I'm doing a stitch along with, um, and this was actually, this pattern was gifted to me by Jen from Felicity Stitches, who's at the Jersey retreat or going to the retreat, Jersey retreat. And I hope you have an amazing time. And then she can tell me all about it when she comes to the Midwest Crest Stitches retreat in October. And, um, so we're stitching this together and Michelle from Cozy Egg, she also has it. Um, Lori from Mischievous Stitches, she has it kitted up and so I'm bullying her into making it a mania start. Um, Kim from Canada, who is uh, Busy Bee Primitives on YouTube and I, is she Busy Bee Stitches on Instagram? Not sure, I think so. Um, she, this she's actually had she's going to stitch it with us because she had it planned as a mania start and Candy has part of it. I don't know if she's got the whole thing. So but she's going to be starting it and Lots of other people said they had it had it kitted and we're going to start so um, I we are using um, It's with I need own thread W T W T N T Birds of a Feather S A L is the hashtag we're going to use on Instagram. And um, I, as many people that are going to stitch it, I will tag as well. So you can either follow the hashtag or you can request to follow those individuals. Um, but here is enough of my rambling. This is so pretty. So here, it's not very big when it's on a 40 count. And of course I'm using my birdie project bag. So there it is. It doesn't require a huge piece of fabric. It's very pretty. Now the it's deceiving because these colors are very muted. Um, but the sampler itself is not. Let me pull it out here again. Um, I'm just doing these small flowers here and they are very muted, but these red ones are very red. Uh, beautiful colors to this one. I pulled them all and laid them on my fabric to make sure that it was going to be um, a good fabric choice and it's amazing. So there's that. I've been digging um, a massive hold of china to lay in because that's what they do. They lay in the wet dirt. and. Evelyn's laying over here very pregnant and looking like she's almost dead. She's not actually very pregnant yet. She's a month away, but she's halfway through. Oh, and then this one. This one, and I wish I could remember, and I tried to go back. I couldn't find it. Um, but this is um, a freebie 
and it's on one of the Facebook groups and I think it might be like the Prim Stitchers. So if you go into their files, it's there. It is a, um, the chart is by Sabrosa from 2013 and it's ridiculously adorable. Not super big. And um, this is just my little start on it. Just on a scrap piece of fabric. This is a oh, Lakeside Linen, um, not vintage. Oh, it is. Vintage Light Exemplar. That's it. Just a little start. By the way, if you are nervous about um, washing your fabric, um, I was just watching Quirks and Stitches as a new 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 to me floss tuber I guess she's got about five or six videos and I want to say she started in March because she wanted to do mania but she can't because she's traveling and she was just at her mother's in Ohio and she brought like I want to say something ridiculous like 40 pieces or something her mom used to own an LNS and she must have quite the stash for her to dig through and her mom also used to do a lot of framing so her mom framed all these pieces so if you've been following her on Instagram you're just getting totally spammed with all her beautiful finishes um, and they're fantastic, just fantastic. She's so lucky to have um, her mom as a stitcher too. Oh, because she was talking that they're very old school and she sticks to mostly DMCs and not the hand dyed fabrics because um, she washes everything and her mom must spray it spray the fabric or get it wet somehow in the, like the stretching process and um so she doesn't she's worried about running and bleeding and so she doesn't use hand dyed fabric so i just wanted to mention um lakeside linen is color fast as well as um gentle arts uh over dyed floss is also color fast to be honest, I'm not sure about Classic Color Works and I'm not sure about Weeks, but I know that um, Gast is and so is Lakeside Linen Fabrics. So if you're a washer, you can do that. And if you're still worried that they might bleed um, or fabrics run, you can always wash them beforehand just to check and make sure that they don't um, run and you don't get any color coming off. And um, so that's my tip of the day. My next start is a bee in your bonnet, Summer House Stitchworks. I've had this one forever. I think Chelsea's starting this one too, or she had the chart, I can't remember, but. Um, I love, love, love this. I've had it for quite a while and the colors are so pretty. And I really wanted those colors just to pop, so I chose a really light fabric. And I believe that this is just, um, A legacy linen uh, pardon me uh, Devon cream I don't know if that's there's a period after Devon so is that like Devonshire or it's a it's a 30 a 34 count I don't know what exactly that means something cream Devon cream but it's very pretty, and there is my meager little start. Um, and that was one of those where I just put one length of floss in. And that's it. But this one, there's really not that much to it. It's another kind of big one, but there's a lot of open space. I'm going to save this B-skep till the end because I think that's going to be my favorite thing to stitch. It's all done in, um, in eyelets. It's... Oh, here. There's a close-up of it. Can you see it? Isn't that pretty? And then this is all done in overdyes, um, gassed specifically. So very pretty. And the colors are very bright and very vibrant. Ah, the sun beating down on my back. It's now getting very warm. So if you watched my last video, you know I had mentioned that I wasn't sure if um, there was a doe, one of my yearlings, if she was pregnant or not. Um, well, she was. Joblin, what are you doing? Remember that these are my does that um, I named after cross-stitch. 
So this is um, this is Tempting Tangles and Joblin, and that's the other white one is Mirabilia. Um, that's Tawny. She's a two-year-old, not a yearling. So they had uh, California names. And um, the one inside, oh, is Chatelaine. So she's the only one that didn't have a baby this year. So she's my dry yarn. And maybe, who knows, maybe she'll surprise me too and have spit one out later. Okay, so we're getting towards the end. Oh, I think I might have just two more. Okay, so the next one, actually, it was it was supposed to be a retreat start, but, um, you know, too much of this and not enough of this. I actually didn't have to frog anything, so that was good. And I probably put in three, so I put in 14 stitches last October, and I came home, and I had to frog them all because they were in the wrong spot. That didn't really surprise me. I kind of had an inkling about it when I was putting them in, which is why I stopped at 14. And so this year, pretty much everything that I stitched, I thought I was going to have to frog, but I didn't. So, bonus. Okay, so the next one is, um, if you saw Candy's video, so she said that she was going to add a stitch to her mania start, and I could pick it out, whatever I wanted. So naturally, I wanted to pick out a Hade, but I didn't because I was... I was nice. And so instead, I um, was selfish and picked out something that I'm stitching so I'd have somebody to stitch it with. So this is Morning Song by Just Nan, but I did know that she'd love it because her and I have um, a very similar stitching style. She's probably, well, she's not probably, she's definitely more diverse in her stitching than I am. Um, but this is really cute. It's just a little sampler. I'm not doing it on the gingham, neither is she. And so cute. Everybody's fighting today. And so I'm doing it on a natural. Oh. Ivan jumped over the fence and Evelyn crawled under it. And they thought they were going to get those ducks. Um, what you don't know about livestock guardian dogs is they're not like hunting dogs. They're a little bit slow and cumbersome and they're just like really big. And watching them run is kind of funny because they're, they're not very athletic and they're not very agile. I'm actually, he's a little hefty right now. So I'm kind of surprised that he even cleared that fence. There he goes. Here, can you see him? Ivan! Ivan! Come here, buddy. They're really good at sitting and barking. That's about what they're good at. Um, Maremas are particularly good. Um, they're one of the best livestock guardian dogs for guarding chickens. I actually have a lot of people that call me for puppies that want them for guarding chickens um, because because of that. Other, other dogs don't uh, go after airborne predators. But they recognize them as a predator where a lot of the other dogs don't and they could care less about a duck But these guys will chase them down. It's kind of funny Anyways, okay back to stitching So here is my start. This is so cute and um, The little rooster weather vane there is done over one. This is I mean, it's easy to do over one because this is Can you not chew on my box? This is a um, a 28 count fabric, which is what the called for was so yeah so that's that very cute Box. now if we were counting that should be 14 I don't know if that is or not but I have one more to show you and then that's it here is a super oldie, but a goodie. Actually, it's not that old. I was surprised actually at how new it was. It is a 2002. I guess that's... Um, this is Hillside Samplings, a Tree of Life sampler. That's very cute, right? We all like a good house. Now here's the funny thing. So this is, um, get out of there. 
This is actually stitched on an uneven weave. So in the photo, it's square. It will not, or it's, uh, it's near square. The fabric that they used was um, a 37 by 43 count. And the stitch count is 185 by 135. I am stitching it on a 40 count. So their dimensions are 8.6 times 7.3 inches on the 37 43 count on a 40 count it's going to be nine and a quarter by six and three quarters so quite a bit different so it's going to be more a traditional sampler and less um square very cute and um stitching this in hand also because it's one thread but i this is i'm not enjoying stitching that in hand the fabric's kind of a pain i do have it on a big piece of fabric which i'm not going to unravel but um, it's so pretty. I love it. And it's very easy. So I've actually been doing this sitting at my desk um, while I'm on hold with insurance companies or whatever, just because there's really no counting per se, because it's so easy and methodical. You just, and there's no more than five stitches in a row. So it's been really easy. So very pretty. And this is just um, a Zweigart linen and it's a Newcastle cream. So, and Newcastle is a 40 count. So that's it. That is my mania, folks. That's it. That's not it. I actually have a pile of crap. So what I'm doing is I'm stitching it up like every day. I'm starting just what I feel like stitching. Um, I don't have anything kitted. I did go through all the charts that I potentially wanted to start, made a list of all the floss, um, and then um, made sure I had everything. And I. So I was only missing a few, um, so I was able to go um, just pick those up at my LNS, no biggie. I'm kind of getting to that point. It's the 16th of the month now. Starting to feel a little manic. And I'm starting to think I've completely lost my mind, and I probably already had 30 projects, which is exactly the reason why I was frantically finishing so many um, prior to Mania starting. Um, I don't care. I'm going to start the things. I'm gonna start them all. I might not stitch them all, but I'm going to start them all. It's going to be epic. It's going to be fun. So I will be back at the end of the month, hopefully, um, with a recap of the um, second half of the projects I started. Until then, I hope you are stitching all the things and having an amazing time. And if you're not, I hope you're enjoying watching everyone else stitch all the things while you um, have your monogamania or whatever it is that you're doing um, and just that you're getting some stitches in and enjoying it and um, I do want to take the opportunity to thank everyone um, I didn't really want to talk about the retreat in this one because I knew it was going to be long but um, just want to thank everyone who came to the retreat it was um, a bit of a, almost a religious experience for me it was um, a lot of fun and um, a great time was had and lots of new friends made and what what an amazing group of women that was um i have some really exciting things planned for 2019 um some of them are just in the planning stages and some of them um i'm gonna go crazy before i get to like officially announce it so if you're interested at all in a possibly attending a retreat, you're going to want to join the Midwest Cross Stitch Group on Facebook. And you can go on to Facebook and just search Midwest Cross Stitchers and we will pop up there and join the group. It is from now on, if there are openings um, for a retreat or um, signups are going to start um, or anything like that, that's where I'm going to be posting that information. So if you want to be on the waiting list, anything like that. Uh, I've just decided that's probably the fairest way to do it. I haven't done a waiting list because I don't feel like I have a fair way to do it. So I'm just going to do it through the group. I'm going to, it's going to be kind of first come, first serve, and you'll have to join the group. Um, I mean, I, I, I know that that's, it just gives everybody kind of the same opportunity, but um, I know that's not the fairest of all either. I mean, I don't spend hardly anytime on Facebook either so I get it but it's the best I could come up with so 
Um, if you're interested, go join the group. Uh, we're also doing some exchanges. Um, I'm going before this video posts. Uh, you will, um, if you signed up for the exchange, we have about 30 participating in our first one, so that's pretty exciting. And it's um, for July, and it's going to be a patriotic theme. And um, you sign up through the group. It's we will be doing another one in the fall that you can sign up for. And by the time this video is posted, check your emails because um, you should have your partner in there. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. So yeah, that's it. Um, so I'm actually just kind of pulling fabric as I go. Um, I have a big pile of it, Trista. Okay, so while we were at the retreat and, um, okay, Chloe. How could you guys have killed this tree? <laughs> it's a big old baby. I mean. Hey Floss Tube, it's Michelle, farm girl. I should just call myself Goat Girl. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Can you not mess with that? And that's worked really well. I don't think this is gonna work. Nightmare. Oh fuck. Stop it now. Go away! What's the matter, girl? Are you hot? Are you hot and crabby? Oh, Trista, be nice. You're on camera doing that. You use um, top, bottom, and then this is the... Sorry if you can hear that. Someone's peeing. Some fighting going on. Can you... Stop. Chloe? Stop. So, yeah. Oh, somebody drooled on me. Can you not lick me? Ugh. Another. Oh my God, this is really an owl. Oh, okay, we it out. <laughs> I know you've been eating poop. I'm trying to lick my face because this is a 36 count, and I wanted to do it over one. Krista, just chill. Chloe. Okay, hey, just just ignore her. You don't have to fight with her. You can just ignore her. You go away. And do you feel like I kind of feel like I should be wearing like a leotard and leg warmers? Stitch and it's a she's a maniac. Something like that. I was only missing a few. Evelyn, stop digging. Have you had enough of me? I don't think that this outdoor thing will work really. I don't remember. Is that distracting with her back there? Having her way with that branch? Oh, it's over here. It's on this side of the fence. Yeah, I'll take it. I don't know what she's doing. Whatever. <laughs> what?